fan of the channel reached out to me and asked if I could make a tutorial on how to make a left-handed NES controller. And after talking to him about it and finding out its purposes, it sounded like a pretty fun project, so I said yes. Now, a left-handed NES controller is just an NES controller that's been rewired internally so all of the controls work in a mirrored fashion. So instead of the D-pad being in your left hand, it is now in your right hand, and it works as it should. So right is still right, up is up, and all the other buttons are basically mirrored. So A becomes B, B becomes A, and select and start are flipped. Now this has its uses for people playing Tetris or for people who are experiencing left-hand fatigue of pressing the D-pad and just want to switch over to their right hand. Now this is just my personal take on it. Left-handed controllers do exist already online. I'm just showing an alternative to those that might benefit people for other reasons. So let's go ahead and dig into this. My first idea for this project was just to show what traces on the circuit board to cut and reroute those using 30 gauge wire to accomplish a mirrored version of the control scheme. Now this is the controller I repaired in my last video and it shows kind of what that process would look like. This is 30 gauge wire and I had to use 30 gauge wire to jump the broken connections. Now after talking it over it became clear that that might not be the easiest thing to reproduce for someone who has minimal soldering skills or for someone just starting out. So I went ahead and designed two little circuit boards to accomplish those mirrored versions for us. And they're as easy as removing the chip and then dropping that board into place. So let's have a look at those two little circuit boards. These are the two circuit boards I designed for this mod. The first one accomplishes the mirrored remapping of the controls and that's it. So it's ideal for someone who just wants to dedicate one controller to a left-handed and that's it. And I went ahead and designed another one that accomplishes the remapping of the buttons but also gives the user the option to revert those changes using surface mount switches. If you look closely all the switches are labeled with what buttons they control. So this one controls start and select, this one controls right and left, down and up, B and A. So it also gives the user the option to mirror only, you know, say the D-pad or B and A or start and select. Just gives you more of a variety. And the idea behind it is just to solder up these small surface mount switches. They will be linked in the description below. You can pick them up on Mauser and it gives you the option to flip them back and forth using a small flat head or an X-Acto knife like I have here. So let's go ahead and solder this one up and install it into a controller. We can remove the chip using solder wick. It's very easy to rip up an edge here, so you definitely want to avoid moving your iron or the wick aggressively, and don't be surprised if you rip up one of the two unused pads. Now we can take the chip and solder it into the mod board.
In order to solder the mod board to the NES board, I'm using scrap leads to make the connection. I'll start by soldering the leads into the NES board, then slip the mod board over those leads and solder it into place. It really helps if you get the leads as straight as possible. I later found out that using wire instead of the leads makes the install a lot easier. Installing the board over the leads wasn't too bad, but it was made easier using tweezers to line up each lead to each hole. With all of the switches in the down position, the controller will operate as it normally would, so let's go ahead and loosely assemble it inside the front half of the shell. And hit start, just to show everything working. But now, if we take the board back out, and flip all of those switches up, it'll operate in mirror mode, meaning the D-pad can be in the right hand. Oh, I think my skin is activating one of the buttons. Uh, so we're just using a small blade here to flip all the switches up. The reason why I used such small switches was just to keep everything confined inside of the controller, because uh, one of the goals behind this was to make everything concealed so it doesn't look like the controller was altered with. You could, if you wanted, to change this board, you could modify it in a way to allow for switches to be mounted externally. Uh, it is kind of a pain to take the controller apart just to switch it back, but like I said, I just wanted to give that option. And, uh, you know, the possibility to modify it further is there. But for now, let's just go ahead and slap the controller back inside of the half shell and play it left-handed. Play it left-handed. This is definitely weird. There's, there's definitely a learning curve to this. It's not for me, that's for sure, but uh... 
it does work. It's really weird playing it like this, but there's just a little bit of a learning curve there, but that just proves that it works. So let's go ahead and assemble that other circuit board. As much as I really hate clenched leads, bending all the leads over allows for a flatter install. For this install I'm using 30 gauge wire instead of leads and it makes it much easier to install. After trying both I highly recommend using wire over leads. So this is the demonstration of the other circuit board. This one just takes the controls and mirrors it and that's it. So let's go ahead and plug it in and play Mario right-handed again. Or left-handed again. D-pad in the right hand. It's very confusing. Okay, so the D-pad's in the right hand and it's going to be weird again, but down is down, up is up, and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and play. So my obvious problem is I'm still trying to convince my brain that the D-pad is on the right because I'm trying to use the D-pad on the left but the A and B buttons are on the left. So there is a bit of a learning curve to it but I'm sure if you put in the time you can play with this. Uh, but that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will be giving this controller away on my Instagram so be sure to check that link below and follow it for a giveaway. And I will also be giving away the leftover circuit boards with um, some of the switches installed. So be sure again to follow my, the link down below to my Instagram and I'll be giving away these leftover boards. And to the person who suggested this video, I will be giving you the controller with the switches because honestly, I'm not gonna use it. So uh, this one is going to the person that suggested this video and I'll be reaching out to you via email. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Before I close out this video, I just wanted to go over why I designed the chip to install on the front of the circuit board rather the back, and that is actually a very simple reason. The face of the controller offers more depth than the rear part, so we have on the face about 8.9 millimeters. And if we look at the back of the controller, we have 
six millimeters. Now that two millimeter difference accounts for the thickness of the PCB and makes the shell close a lot easier. And that's why I designed it with the circuit board on the front. If we take a look at the first prototype of this board, you'll see that I installed it on the back. And the reason why I did this was just because it would be easier to install, but that added height of the circuit board doesn't allow for the shell to close perfectly. Now this was the first design and my first idea was to have it uh, an end-all be-all. You can have the mirrored version of the control scheme, which would be this chip right here, or you can take the chip out and put it inside the normal position, which will allow for the controller to work in a normal fashion, thus eliminating the need for switches or two circuit boards. This would be accomplished by using IC sockets instead of just soldering the chip in. Now with just the chip in, we reach a height that would impact how the controller would close. So if we put an IC socket in, that would add to the height and then further impact how the shell would close. You could still get it to close, but the plastic would bow and it would be noticeable. So I decided to skip this idea and just trash it and go with the two that I showcase in this video. Again, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Instagram for those giveaways, and I will see you next time.